Hey guys, Cable Guy Ken here with a quick video real quick. One of my brothers on the uh, Facebook page had mentioned that uh, he had tried making one of these little monster stoves like I made and uh, said he couldn't get it to light. I'm seeing if I can get close up on that somehow you can see. I've got about 18 to 24 1 16th inch jets just right at where the neck comes up on this stove. Um, that's just how I chose to jet it. Uh, then I put the, I've got a, I'll put a little bit more in there. I've got a little bit of fuel in there already. And I've got some of that fiberglass wick material down inside of it. The cord uh, is called grapho glass. It's just a fiberglass cord, um, probably about a half inch in diameter. Uh, I found that on this stove in particular, it does actually help the stove to vaporize better. And again, it keeps it from uh, spilling over as bad if you tip it over or anything, which this one, the base is wide enough, it's not really going to go anywhere. So, uh, the way I use this stove is I put the lid back on. By the way, there's a plastic rubber type seal that goes in here. You'll need to take that out because it will melt. And it'll actually seal off the cap and make it a little bit too pressurized. Um, I drizzle a little bit of fuel on top. That should be enough to get it primed. That actually fills in these little ridges here. And cut the light off. I had the heat off today so it's a little bit cold in the house. Um, but it should still prime up pretty quick and uh, get to going. If I'm out in the field and I have trouble getting it to prime, I'll just pour some fuel around the uh, ground outside of it, which usually, like I said, this will be inside of a hobo stove, and I'll pour the, pour the fuel into the bottom of the hobo stove. And I can hear it starting to boil a little bit. You can see I've only used this stove maybe twice, so it's still got some contaminants. Some of the uh, paint and stuff like that is boiling off of it. Alright, and she is lit. And it's not lit hard yet. It takes it a minute to really get going. But uh, you can see the flame around it. And it should start to grow as it heats up a little bit more. Like I said, it's real cold in here. And uh, I left my bottle of SLX outside all night. So with it being, you know, 32 degrees outside, the alcohol is a little bit colder as well. Which does make a difference in how these stoves burn. Um, you can see the flames starting to grow now. It's just about at full blossom. When it's at full output, the flames will actually reach up to about here. And uh, with one ounce of fuel, I'm getting about a 12 to 15 minute burn time, depending on how long it takes for it to blossom. Um, again, some of the color you see is actually the coating that they would put on the top that uh, to keep it shining and, I guess, preserve the top. It's actually burning some of that off now. That's just about full steam right there. Now you can, if you were using a, uh, a paint can, I wouldn't recommend using it because it's painted, but if you're using something like this, you could set it directly on top of it. But I generally put this in a hobo stove so that it's actually sitting up high enough and the flames hit it. You can hear a little bit of water in there sizzling already. Um, it's not a very stable platform for sitting things on top of. Uh, something like a honey pot that's got an indention on the bottom, it may work pretty decent. But uh, inside of something like a hobo stove, um, that kind of setup, which is it's actually what I've got the paint can for, I'm going to make this my new hobo stove. Uh, just because the bottom of a guy design bottle fits right on top of this this uh, ring here and I can put the lid on it seal it off put my air holes in it put a few relief holes at the top and drop that down inside of it and I'm actually going to secure that to the inside of it so it stays in there permanently that'll make this a portable uh, oven but you can see it burns pretty good no explosions uh, no problems with uh, getting it to go or anything. The main thing about this stove is just having enough jets 
um, I use a sixteenth of an inch if you use a bigger jet you can get away with using less but the sixteenth of an inch jet spaced around it evenly totally encompasses the top of this cap which filters the heat back down into the can and makes it burn a whole lot better um, I don't get any soot off of this and like I said I've only used it a couple of times but I don't get any soot off of this when I'm cooking uh, it burns real clean with heat or else SLX either one um, works real good and I'm sure I mean this isn't my design I'm not claiming it it's uh there's probably somebody out there that's made this exact stove um, I'm not an originator by any means. I'll pop that out the way and let it continue to burn a little bit.